Thank you very much, sister, for that message in song. It's one rich one for Jesus. We can do it. You believe we can do it? Yes, we all can do it. It's one can reach one for Jesus. In order for the work of preaching the gospel to the whole world may be done, we all needed to reach one, at least one, for Jesus. I'm going for a mission trip to the Philippines on Monday, and I'll be there for one month and a half. My former helper became a public school teacher, and her husband was also a public school teacher, and they did a missionary activity for the prisoners of Montinglupa City. And there were 200 people got baptized inside the jail. And I'm happy that they are very active and reaching out, and that's going to be part of my mission trip to see those prisoners and others who are still uh, preparing for baptism because there are thousands of prisoners there. And some of them were really thirsty for the truth as it is in Jesus and will make follow-up visits and missionary work as well as revival meeting in southern Luzon, which was uh, my former district as a pastor in the Philippines. Before I came here to the United States in 2000, I had 30 years experience in the Philippines as a pastor from 1970 up to the year 2000. And the first district that I conducted way back in Camarines Sur requested me to be there during their uh, church anniversary. It's the 70th anniversary of the church and after the anniversary, there will be a revival meeting for two weeks in that particular church. Then, together with all the other missionary activities for the prisoners of Mintong Lupa and other parts of Southern Luzon Mission, for uh, I have not been visiting the Philippines for 11 years. I did not spend vacation for 11 years while I'm here in the United States. So there. They requested me to be present during their revival meeting and lead the church for the revival program within the district. The title of my sermon today is A Living Sacrifice. The word sacrifice is derived from the Latin word sacrificium which means a sacred offering to the Lord. During the Old Testament times, the Israelites were offering goats and lambs for the forgiveness of their sin. They have to present lambs without blemish to the sanctuary, and um, it has to be slaughtered. It, the blood has to be taken and the priest will have to sprinkle the blood of the animal in the curtain between the holy place and the most holy place. And it's only after the death of the lamb that was sacrificed that the sinner is declared forgiven of her sin. But when Jesus came down to this planet Earth, he became the lamb that was slain even before the foundation of the world. For those period of 4,000 years, that the people of God were sacrificing goats and lambs for the remission of their sin, it has ended when Christ died at the cross. When Jesus said, consumatum est, that means to say, it is finished. The sacrificial system of animals has been done away with because it's Christ who, is, who fulfilled that, that prophecy. So we are lucky we do not sacrifice animals now for the forgiveness of our sin. Otherwise, whenever we come to church and we have committed sin, we have to confess our sin to the lamb and slaughter that lamb as a sacrifice on our behalf. But thanks be to God because God gave his son 
our Lord Jesus Christ came down to this planet Earth in the flesh. And he died for our sin as a sacrifice. He is the perfect sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sin. But why is it that the Lord, through the Apostle Paul, has commanded us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, despite of the fact that Christ is a perfect sacrifice for us? Why are we commanded to present our bodies as a living sacrifice? As it is written in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, may I invite you to please open your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable worship. How do we present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God? Why are we commanded to do it? You know, in the Philippines today, beginning tomorrow, is going to be Semana Santa. It's a holy week. And our friends from the Roman Catholic Church, thousands of them will be walking down the street, beating their own body with 12 sticks tied in a string. And as they walk on the street, they beat their own body. And it's all bleeding. And some of them reach to the point of being um, hospitalized after that. Some even allow themselves to get crucified just like Jesus. They are trying to imitate what happened to Jesus. They are also being crucified. Some of them uh, died, but some of them, you know, before they died, they got released from being crucified. And, and so they, they get sick. When we were in Paluan, Occidental Mindoro, I was a new pastor over there. That town was called Paluan because Paluan means you beat your own body. You beat yourself, you punish yourself. The people there during Semana Santa, for the whole week, mostly of the young men, they, they beat their own body. They punish themselves. They were thinking that by doing this, they are forgiven of their sins. And that's not only in Occidental Mindoro, it's true in Luzon, even in Pampanga, it's also true in Visayas and Mindanao. People are blinded to the truth and they have misunderstood the text in Romans 12, verse 1, to present our body as a living sacrifice to them. You have to beat your own body, punish your own selves in order for God to forgive you of your sin. But is that the way God forgive us of our sin? That is not the way. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, what does the Bible say? If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us from all our sin and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So God's way of forgiveness for our sin is not by beating our own body, by punishing our own body, but by presenting ourselves as, as a living sacrifice. First of all, we needed to confess our sin to Jesus and to, to the one that you have committed wrong. If you have committed wrong to your brother, you needed to, to go first to him. I need my water again. In Matthew chapter 18, the Bible tells us that you needed first to make reconciliation with your brother or your sister. And then after making reconciliation, go to the Lord in prayer and ask for the forgiveness of sin. And that's the way God forgive our sin. 
The Bible also tells us in James chapter 5, confess your sin to one another that ye may be healed. So, we needed to confess our sin to one another, especially to the one that you have committed wrong. And then, confess to Jesus. Then the promise of the Lord is, I will forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all our unrighteousness. That is how God forgive us of our sin. If we confess and repent. When we confess, we, we specifically tell the Lord. We, we do not want uh, to prophesy and tell God what is our sin. We needed to go directly and tell to the Lord the sin that we have committed. And after that, repent. Do not do it again and again. Repent, and the Lord will accept our repentance, and we will be forgiven of all our sin. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus paid all our sin. He became the gift of God for all our sin, and he died once and for all throughout all generation. The people during the Old Testament were looking forward to that day when the Messiah will come as the Lamb of God. It was fulfilled after 4,000 years. Now we are 2,000 years back. So we needed to look back to that day when Jesus paid our sin by his death. It's only by accepting and believing that Jesus died for our sin that we are atone with God, that we make reconciliation with God, that we are totally forgiven of all our sin. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father except through him. Only Jesus can forgive and cleanse us from all our sin and all our unrighteousness. It's not the punishment of our own body as a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says that our body is the temple of God. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we needed to take good care of our body. But if we destroy our body, the Lord himself will destroy us also. So because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, we needed to follow the, the lifestyle that is acceptable to God. In 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, the, the Lord is admonishing us to take good care of our body, being the temple of God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, The Bible tells us that whatever we do, whether we therefore eat or drink or whatever we do, do it to the glory of God. Do you know that, do you think that by punishing our own body, beating our own body with 12 sticks of um, bamboo, that, that the Lord is being glorified? I don't think so. We do not glorify God by uh, punishing our body, by destroying our own body. Instead, the Lord said, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do to the glory of God. As Seventh-day Adventists, the Lord prohibit his people to eat pork and other abominable uh, food described in Leviticus chapter 11. There are certain kind of 
uh, of animals that we cannot slaughter for food, like the, the pigs and the horses. They are not for food. God has a design, a purpose for them, but not for, for our consumption. For if we, if we do not follow this, we do not give glory to God. We also do not drink alcoholic beverages because it destroys our body. And whatever we do, we needed to consider if God will be glorified when we do these things. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, the Bible says that we had been redeemed. Aside from we were created by God according to his image, we were redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So we are no longer ours. We belong to God by creation and by redemption. And therefore, we do not abuse our body. We, we take good care of it as a precious gift from the Lord. In Romans chapter, I should say in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible tells us that we were redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Let's look at Revelation chapter 5. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast slain, thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So we were all redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Whatever nationality we belong, whether you are brown or yellow or black or white, whatever color of our skin is, we were all redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So we are precious in the Lord. We are his position by redemption and by creation. Therefore, the Lord has made us a steward of our body to take good care of our body. The Lord made us stewards in four aspects of our lives. First of all, in our body, we are stewards of our body to take good care of it. Second, we are stewards of time. The Lord said, six days shalt thou labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. I would like to congratulate you for, for coming to church every Sabbath day because that was the the habit of Jesus when he was on earth. It was his custom to, to go to church on the Sabbath day and read the scripture and preach the gospel to the people. In like manner, we are followers of Jesus. That's why we come to church every Sabbath day. The Christian church during the first 300 years were all Seventh-day Adventists. They were all keeping Saturday as day of rest in worship and they are waiting for the second advent of Christ. But in the year 321, Emperor Constantine changed the Ten Commandments. He removed the number two, he changed the number four, and he divided the number ten. And it was sanctioned by the Roman Catholic Church. And for a period of 1,260 years, it was implemented by force from 537 AD up to 1798. People will, were forced to come to church on Sunday. Otherwise, if you don't, you got persecuted. And many believers died because of their faith in Jesus and because of obedience to the commandments of God. But in 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte and General Barcher captured the Pope, put him in prison until his death in 1799. And after his death, revival and reformation has uh, spread all over Great Britain, and many of them migrated down here to the United States of America. And that's the reason why Protestant Reformation 
has exploded here in United States of America seeking for religious freedom. But history will repeat itself. According to Sister Ellen White, history will repeat itself. The people of God will be tested again and our faith in Jesus will, will be greatly and extremely tested. And the point of controversy in the last days will be the same, it's the Sabbath. The Sabbath observance will be the point of controversy. And as much that majority of Protestant churches today have joined with the ecumenical movement with the Roman Catholic, they are being united. And once it is declared, once Sunday law is declared, you and I will be severely tested. And during that time, many will, will join the persecutor among us. There will be many from among us who will avoid to be persecuted and join the persecutor. And those who will do that will receive the mark of the beast. But those who remain faithful to Jesus will receive the seal of the living God. So which do you want to have? The seal of the living God or the mark of the beast? It will be our choice. It will be our choice. Because uh, if we chose to follow God and to stand firm for the right, we will receive the seal of the living God. The sealing and the marking of the beast will go hand in hand. It will go simultaneously. So I pray that you and I will receive the seal of the living God and not the mark of the beast. There is no marking of the beast yet until Sunday law is officially declared here in the United States, which will be the final test of our loyalty. <clears throat> Another aspect of our stewardship is that of our talent. We were all given by God the talent. Some of you were given the talent of singing. Our sister who sang today, you have the, the talent of singing. Praise the Lord. And some of us here, Dr. Jack, you have the talent of teaching. Praise the Lord. Continue to do that. Because the Lord is glorified when we use our talent for teaching, for preaching, for singing. And some of us have the gift of helping. Our technician here, it's a talent. It's given to you by the Lord. If you continue to do this, God will bless you. And our elders and our deacons of the church, our superintendents, we were all given by the Lord the yoke of responsibility in the church. And if we are faithful in doing our own responsibilities in the church, whether it is small or great, the Lord will be glorified. And we shall receive the seal of the living God and we shall be permitted to enter into the gates of the holy city. According to Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 to 15, only those that are faithfully obedient to the commandments of God will be permitted to enter into the gates of heaven. But the disobedient, even if they claim to be Christian, but if they intentionally disobey God's commandment, they will be left outside together with the dogs, the dogs are those who return to their vomits. There are many Protestant churches today who have returned to their vomits. When they joined the Protestant church, they vomited the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. But now they are eating it again. They return to their vomits through the ecumenical movement. And according to Revelation chapter 22, verse 15, they will not be permitted to enter into the gates of heaven. They will be left with the murderers, with the enchanters, with the adulterers, and those who are disobedient to the law of God. They will be left outside and not enter into the kingdom of God. So it's a matter of exercising our talent that the Lord has given us. We needed to be faithful stewards of the Lord. Another aspect of our stewardship is uh, the, the treasure, the treasure that the Lord is giving us. 
the Lord requires us to return tithes and offerings. And I congratulate you for returning your tithes and offerings here in Apple Valley International Church. I can see in the report your faithfulness. Continue your faithfulness to the Lord. Be faithful in small things that the Lord has given us because if we remain faithful to the Lord, we will receive the commendation of the Lord when he comes again and he will say, blessed are thou, blessed, with, blessed are you, faithful, you are faithful in small things, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So if we are faithful in the small things that the Lord has given us, we will receive that commendation of the Lord. But those who are not faithful, even if they call on the name of the Lord, the Lord will, will say, I do not know you. You have done iniquity in the world. Your part will be in the hell of fire. That will be a bad um, commendation. That will be condemnation for those who are unfaithful to the Lord. So as redeemed stewards of the Lord, let us practice to be, to be faithful to the Lord in what he has done. It's not by punishing our own body that we present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God. It is by being faithful steward of the Lord that we become a living sacrifice unto the Lord. There is an example in Philippians chapter 4 verse 18 of how we can present our bodies a living sacrifice. Please open your Bible with me to the book of Philippians. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4 and, and verse 18 But I have all and abound, and I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet-smelling sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Who is this Epaphroditus? He is a faithful member of the church in Philippians, and he gathered donations to support the missionary journey of Paul so that Paul has enough support financially and spiritually to do his mission trip throughout Asia in preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is one example of presenting our body a living sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. We can do that if we support our missionaries. We have missionaries sometimes who are uh, languishing in hardship because they did not have enough support for their, for their mission trip, missionary work. But we needed to support them because unless the work of preaching the gospel all over the world to every kindred and tongue and people is finished, the coming of the Lord will be delayed. It has been delayed already. But according to Revelation chapter 10, there must be no more delay. How can we do it? If we faithfully exercise being faithful steward of the Lord, the work of the Lord will be hastened and soon as it is finished and his character is reproduced in us, then the Lord will take us home to our home in heaven where we never grow old and never get sick and never die. And according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, another, another way whereby we can present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord is by walking in love with Christ and with one another. If we exercise loving one another, if we are in love with the Lord and in his work of preaching the gospel to the world, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. And finally, in Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 12, Hebrews chapter 10. And from verse 12, this is what the Bible says. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice 
for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their heart and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where emissions of this is, there is no more offering for sin. This refers to our Lord Jesus Christ. After he was offered once and for all as a living, as a sacrifice for us, there is no more sacrifice for sin, meaning the sacrificial offering. It has ended. But we were admonished to present our bodies as a living sacrifice after we have accepted Christ's perfect sacrifice for us in response to his perfect sacrifice for us, we also present our body as a living sacrifice, not in order to be saved, but as an evidence of being saved. As our gratitude to God for saving us, we present our bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord, holy and acceptable to God. My brothers and sisters, May we all present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Let us not follow those who are doing it blindly by punishing their own bodies to the point of getting sick and hospitalized, and some of them to the point of death. We no longer needed to do that, because if we do that, we are as if not recognizing Christ's sacrifice for us as if we are insulting Christ's sacrifice for us if we do that. But instead, let us praise God, thank God for what a wonderful provision he has given. May the Lord bless us.